when we talk about process controllers, PID controllers uh, are very important. And this actually is a picture of a typical PID controller. And you see here, uh, it's SV, that is set value, this is the desired value. And PV is the process value, that would be the true value. So here you have, in this example, you have a set value of 500 and a process variable of 316. So the deviation between the two is 284, close nearly. Uh, so uh, the PID controller, uh, just like on-off control, it's, uh, uh, it consists of this control law and the arithmetic box there. Here again, a picture of another PID controller. Uh, with a process variable, for example, here, PV. Uh, the PID control continually, uh, continually cal calculates the error value, value, E of T, and then it applies correction based on proportional, integral, and derivative terms. So it takes the error and, uh, say, uh, it multiplies by a factor K, KP, and then it assumes that that would be the, the correct power to give to the process or the plant. Uh, but also it integrates, so it to, the, to integrate the error is actually to look at the history of the error and, uh, and uh, add the sum of errors f for uh, through some time here. And then the derivative control looks at the change in error, and this is also added here. So the sum here is a, a, a result of the three elements, the current error, the history of the error, and the change in error, which is basically to try to look at the future of the error, or, or assume the future of the error. error. Where, where is it going? And then you have the factors here, KP, KI, and KD, which uh, the operator adjusts here, how much of that part, how much of that part, and how much of that part should we use in our control system. The proportional gain in the proportional control is, uh, controls how much of this block is used. <clears throat> and if the error changes abruptly, the output from the controller also changes according to that, but maybe on a different scale. This one changed from 0 to 2, this one changed from 0 to 4, which would mean that we have a proportional gain of 2. So the number here is multiplied by 2. Here, the error goes in the RAM function suddenly, started at time uh, 10 seconds. And the uh, the proportional gain factor uh, y c follows the same curve, but then it's doubled in power compared to that one. That's the proportional one. Pro P controller limitations. Uh, when you uh, have proportional control, let's go back to the model with a tank here. Let's say that we use proportional control here. Well, the process where we try, let's say that we want 67 degrees in our process, but the ambient temperature, the temperature outside the tank is like 20 degrees maybe. So the outside will always try to cool down the inside here. And if we have an acting power here of say 50 watts or something, the 50 watts here is just what is needed to, in order to uh, keep maintain the temperature, which is maybe 50 degrees over the temperature on the outside. So you need some acting power in order to uh, to uh, maintain temperature when you have an ambient trying to cool it down. Going back here to the slide here. The proportional controller alone will suggest an acting power that is some constant multiplied by the error. So if the error 
the deviation between the desired and the true value. If the error is zero, it will suggest zero power. But in the example with the tank, you see that zero power is will actually cause the temperature to drop. So if you have proportional control alone, as you get closer to the true value, the uh, the power uh, suggested by the peak control is just enough to keep the temperature a few degrees below the desired temperature. So that's when you have something called a steady state error. So P controller alone will result in a steady state error. This is from a textbook. All proportional control systems have a steady state error. The proportional mode of control tends to be used in processes where the gain, Kp, can be made large enough to reduce the steady state error to an acceptable level. However, the larger the gain, the greater the chance of the system oscillating. The oscillations occur because of time lags in the system. The higher the gain, the bigger will be the controlling action for a particular error, and so the greater the chance that the system will overshoot the set value and oscillations occur. So, maybe we should use the P-control uh, together with one of the uh, other two, the I or the D. So let's look at the integral control. The integral uh, is uh, actually calculates the, the area under the curve of the error. And you see, as time goes by, the uh, you, you collect more and more and more and more area under that curve. If the error is a ramp, well, then you have a, a parabolic shape of the uh, the output here from from the from the integral control. So the acting power is a result of the collected error over time, uh, and constant error gives more and more and more acting power. So you have an integral. That one can deal with a steady state error, because a steady state error error is a uh, is a constant error, and that will be build up more and more and more area under the curve. And thus, this one will suggest more and more and more power. But it's relatively slow. Let's see what... what uh, and if, we, if, if you combine the two, you actually get rid of the, the, uh, the uh, steady state error. Because of the lack of a steady state error, a PI controller can be used where there are large ch uh, changes in the process variable. However, because the integration part of the control takes time, the changes must be relatively slow to prevent oscillations. Okay. And finally, the derivative control that is used to speed up the system response because it looks at the change in the error. So, um, uh, it tries to predict the future by looking at the change. Uh, the derivative control uh, here, uh, if you have a system like this, uh, a, a PI control will will uh, will uh, act on, this is a set point, suddenly changed and then drop down again. The PI control will overshoot a bit, but then settle down again. Uh, the PID uh, will reduce the overshoot time here. And can even uh, uh, even reduce it to zero. But the problem is when you have noise. If you if you see here, the PI control no uh, the noise uh, doesn't go through the output to the output. But the PID control noise will actually be be amplified. Why? Well, noise are fast changes. And fast changes have a, a very large derivation proportion. So the the derivation part of a PID control actually amplifies noise.